Hello and welcome to UiPath Expo Hub. Today we are in chapter number 6 and we are going to see how to use assets in orchestrator. So first of all we need to understand the meaning of asset. So what do you understand by meaning of asset is is nothing but a kind of a variable that you create in orchestrator which can be shared. Right? So whom you will be sharing? the value of the variable can be shared among the robots. For example, uh, let us say I am going to store some credential in the asset. So what I am going to do, I can share the asset variable. So asset is nothing but you can simply say it is a variable created in orchestrator. It is simple a variable that you generally create in your workflow. Clear? So the usage of this one is one of the uses is let us say credential. So credential is something you do not want to store in your workflow. So what you do rather is you create a asset and store your credentials and wherever required you will be calling that credential and use it. So let us see how to do it. Okay. Let us practically see that. So for the, to start with one thing you need to understand asset means it is a variable which is created in orchestrator and which can be shared with robots. Okay. In simple meaning it is a variable. Okay. So let us see that. So you go to your orchestrator page and here you have something called assets. Click on this one and click on the plus sign. Okay. So you will see there are four uh, different kind of assets that you can create. One is a text asset for general purpose of a message you want to type. A boolean asset which is a value you can store, true or false value you can store. Integer kind of a, you know the numbers you can store here the whole numbers and then the credential which is about the storing your user and event password. So let us see how to use it. So to start with I am going to utilize the text option okay and here I am going to give text demo asset any name you can give and then here down below you have got this text. So remember we are right now utilizing the orchest orchestrator version 2020. So in the future in case they change uh, the panel but but again everything else would remain as it is okay. So let us say let me give a value let us say good morning okay. So why I have to use asset I will tell you the very simple thing is it, it is very easy to change. Let us say I am utilizing this asset in a robot which is going to say good morning to you. After some time let us say you have to say good afternoon or after some time you have to say good evening and good night. So it is very easy for you to just to come to the asset and change it. So let me simply create click on create and I am going to explain all of this slightly later. So I am simply utilizing a asset which is a text asset text demo asset and this asset has a value called good morning. So it is quite easy let us say to again you have to change some value to good evening good good night all you have to do is edit this and change it over here okay. So this gives you a quick access to change something dynamically you know it is very easy to come and change it okay. So that is the usage of orchestrator asset. So now how do you utilize this let us we have to learn that. So for that you, there is an activity called get asset. So for that click on activities and here you say get assets okay. So this is the activity I will be drag and drop that and it is very easy to use it okay. Just by listening to the word asset do not get confused this is very easy this is just a variable. So what I am going to do I am going to mention the asset name. So the asset name is available in orchestrator. So what you do simply copy this okay and paste it over here and while you are using this ensure you utilize a double quote. So I will put, put a double quote and paste the name of the asset simple and then whatever the value is there in that asset it should transfer to a variable for that I will create a variable control plus k and let us say let me give the variable as op or out whatever variable you want to declare and then I want to see if the value has been downloaded from orchestrator to this variable or not for that I will use a message box. So drag and drop a message box and I am simply going to say op okay I am going to simply say op. Now if I run this what would happen this should say me good morning. So this is quite simple you understood how to utilize this okay. Now the next thing I am going to show you is how to upload this. So you can see now the value has come good morning okay. So what I will do I do not want to run the workflow because practically you will not run a workflow from UiPath Studio. 
you have to upload your workflow to orchestrator and from there you have to run that job right for that what i will do i will hit on publish and it is going to get published to the orchestrator okay it's telling me the version number is 1.0.9 hit on publish okay the moment you hit on publish and it, it is done all you have to do go back to orchestrator page scroll down and here you have something called packages so go to packages and here you will see if you click on this it will show you the list of or number of times this particular workflow has been updated so right now i am updating it for the ninth time so 1.0.9 okay so this is what got uploaded now how do you utilize this you have uploaded this to utilize this what you have to do go to processes tab okay now in the processes what you do select this and you get a arrow mark okay click on this so by doing this it will give you a prompt are you sure you want to update this say yes and it's going to update and you'll get a green tick mark now you can see the version number has changed to 1.0.9 done after that i'm going to run this job so the moment i run this job what would happen i'm going to select the robot it is going to show you the list of robot now for the demo purpose because i'm having only one laptop in one laptop you can only have one robot you cannot have multiple robots so if i have another laptop probably i could connect to that laptop and you know configure the robot too but for the learning purpose you need to so once you work in the corporate you will be able to see all the robots that are there in their environment okay that will be in huge in number it could be 10,000 20,000 50,000 depending on the number of employees and the usage okay but for for our understanding purpose I'm just selecting one robot and I'm utilizing that newly updated package okay click on start so the moment you do this the job is ready and you can directly run the job directly from here or you can create a job okay you can create a job from here also so i will i find this easy so i have done it so you can see the moment i do this what is happening the robot started running and the good morning message has come okay and to check whether this robot is running or not what you do you can keep this uh, you know open and you can see it is playing right this is your uh, uipath robot or the agent which is running okay you can see that all right so you understood how to um, you know how do you utilize this so this we have seen the text asset now i am going to show you the very useful one is the credential asset to create a credential asset what you do again click on the plus sign and here let me say gmail credential so gmail credential or any application that you will be using in your company you have to create an asset name for that application okay now what i'm going to do i'm going to use credential and here you can give a description as to why you are using this and or for what purpose you are using this and then i am not going to use the global value this time okay i'm going to utilize something called robot for that you need to click on this plus sign okay so once you click on the plus sign it's going to ask you to select the robot so i have only one robot so i'm selecting robot one and for gmail i'm going to enter the gmail id as the username and i'm going to enter the password for gmail okay so i have entered the password and i'm going to click on add so what would happen the username and the password that you have stored this will can only be utilized by the robot number one no other robot in your environment can utilize this until unless you assign it from the asset okay that is the meaning done now it has been created and here i need to update the gmail so you can see uh, if i leave it blank it is not allowing me to create it so you have to utilize this particular window to enter the username and password and let me enter this here all right and then the create button got enabled so this is a kind of a global value and here i am assigning whichever robots i want to assign okay then i'm going to click on create so what happened the new credential asset got created you can see the type is credential type wonderful so now i want to utilize it so let's see how to utilize it now let's understand how to utilize the credential for that you have another activity called get credential okay so drag and drop this activity to your sequence and here it's very simple to use again you again utilize the same way copy the name of the asset 
okay one second so i am copying the name of the asset go back over here go to the asset name put double quotes and paste it paste the asset name okay so once you paste the asset name next thing you have to do remember your asset the credential type of asset has got two data one is the username the other one is the password so you have to create two different variables to download the values to the variables for that i am going to create in the output i am going to create two different variables so control plus k for password let me say pwd and and for for the username i am utilizing another variable which i have already created that is username okay so this two variables will contain the values of username and password into this okay this get downloaded and then once this thing has the values what i'm going to do i'm using an open browser activity opening gmail.com and then uh, you know i'm utilizing a type into activity and it's typing into the gmail so for example when you open gmail.com so what you do to experiment this you sign out from your gmail okay um, that is where um, you, i can apply that because it's a single sign on right it automatically signs in so let me sign out first of all so once i sign out i am going to remove the account so click on remove and hit on the minus yes remove okay so what would happen now this is when you when you go to gmail.com this is the page it's going to open so here it's going to type the gmail.com the next thing it's going to type the password very simple okay so let me simply run this it's a simple one click activity i've used then type secure text to enter password you should not use the type into rather you have to use type secure text okay remember that so once you utilize all of this activity let's run it and see whether it's properly logging me in to gmail.com or not so let's see that okay so it has opened gmail.com and it should enter my you understanding so this username is coming from orchestrator then it should enter the uh, password okay there is something went wrong enter your password so let's see what went wrong so type into let's see that so this one type secure text did not work right so what i will do let me delete this let me show you how to utilize it once again this error generally would happen if you have not selected uh, you know it's a selector failure you did not select the right window so type secure text click on indicate element inside the browser and now i am selecting this window and here it should utilize what it should empty the field and the type secure input here your password is stored in pwd right so type pwd done okay same here your username is username okay so everything is done now let's save it and try to run it again so what i will do i'll close this go back to your path run it okay so when i'm running this okay so let's see it is entering the gmail.com then it is entering the password okay and you have finally logged in so right now what you have done you are running this directly from uipath studio i want to run this package from orchestrator okay you will never run you know in, in a practical situation you will build your workflow in uipath studio but all your testing supposed to happen from orchestrator only so what i will do again i will sign out so let me upload this package to orchestrator and remove this particular account you don't have to do all of this while you are in an application because this gmail.com i have to do this so now what i'm going to do i am going to publish it okay now it's saying dot 10 because it's the 10th time i'm doing the change to the package and i'm uploading a new package now and hitting on publish okay so the package got updated to check the package if it has been updated or not the first thing you should do is go to packages and click on this icon and here you would see the just now the 10th version of the package has been uploaded done after this the second step is go to processes select the particular process and hit on this icon what would happen and this will get updated from 9 to 10 you can see it got a green tick mark done so now your package is updated now i would be running this 
through orchestrator so i'm not running from the uipath studio okay i will directly run from orchestrator let me run this process now you will see something is happening on my uipath robot and it started entering the username and it, it is entering the password so you can see how successfully it started logging me into the gmail.com okay i'll give you a couple of tips and tricks guys uh, while utilizing anything like when you are trying to log into an application uh, the best thing that i would uh, ask you to apply a delay activity in between so what happens many applications do not respond and your robot is very fast it's trying to enter details so quick you know many times you know you will find there's an error okay so after entering the credentials and the username use a delay activity so i'm giving a delay for 0 to seconds so that way most of your workflow which is failing will work okay delay is very useful activity remember that that's a tip for the day so guys you understood how to use the asset in orchestrator you understood what is the meaning of an asset you understood how to utilize a text asset you understood how to utilize a credential asset okay from orchestrator so like that you can utilize boolean and the integer one which is a simple one thank you for watching this guys i'm going to come up with more interesting videos and i'm pretty sure by watching all the videos and spending little time i'm sure you will be very confident and you can attend any kind of interview in uipath automation so please do watch all the videos carefully do practice while you are watching the videos that is where it's going to help you thank you very much and the next video that i'm going to come up will be on uipath orchestrator queues okay i'm going to explain on the queues thank you so much you guys have a wonderful day